Hey guys, welcome back to Advanced Orthogonal with Dr. Collins. Let's talk about the frontal x-ray. Let's talk about why it's important, some of the structures you're going to be visualizing on your frontal x-ray, setting up the frontal x-ray properly, evaluating if you have a good picture or you need to retake it, and then finally troubleshooting for rotation and also for a patient who is hyperkyphotic to where you can get a good frontal film of them. The frontal film is so important for your orthogonal analysis in three main ways. So the frontal picture is going to, one, provide you with the correct height to come from and the z-axis for your adjustment. Two, it is really important for the factors that are going to be related to table placement and how to influence the table. All those relationships come from your frontal x-ray. Three, it gives you a secondary reference for anatomical relationships when you're talking about a stylus, aim, and lead. So what are some of the structures that you are going to be visualizing on your frontal x-ray that you need to be able to see properly so you can analyze them? Your mastoid process, your posterior arch, especially that inferior aspect, the atlas transverse process, your axis C2 spinous, the nasal cavity and nasal septum, the ocular orbit, your occipital condyles, the zygomatic arch, your lateral masses, and your odontoid. Even the C7 bodies, you need to have these all visualized so that you can mark them properly to analyze your frontal. Setting up your frontal x-ray, doing this properly requires the last film we took, the sagittal x-ray. And so what we did, because we have a perfect sagittal x-ray, is we're going to draw the S-line to see the plane that the atlas is on. We did that before, right? And now we're gonna take the frontal on that S-line to make sure that we're capturing the plane that the atlas is on, right? So what I'm going to do is set the camera up on the X-ray to, to that angle. I'm going to also accommodate the bucky for the patient's back and head tilt, line everything up properly. And then I'm going to take bring my camera over to an advanced orthogonal, the measurement would be 46 degrees. I use a string to measure that out. And then from there, we are going to troubleshoot for rotation. In advanced orthogonal, we don't take out head tilt on a frontal x-ray, but we do want to address rotation. You do not want a rotated film. You want to capture the skull, where it is at, perfectly symmetrical in space, so that you can measure the displacement of these structures below. So how do you figure out, before you take that x-ray, if the head's rotated, right? That's very important. You are going to look at the ocular orbits. So look at those eyes there and the side of the skull. And what you want to do is take rotation out using your chair and get the ocular orbit inside of the skull as perfectly symmetrical as possible. So what's your biggest issue going to be with your frontal x-ray? It's typically rotation. So that picture comes up and all of a sudden you notice, oh man, one side of that skull, the ocular orbits, I'm way rotated one way or the other. So what you're going to do is troubleshoot that rotation by coming back around. You're going to look at the patient again and you're going to bring that uh, chair over and get that head slightly, sometimes it doesn't even match up necessarily with what you think you're seeing on a patient because their skull is slightly um, aberrant. But you wanna make sure you are using your x-ray findings to properly line them up. A few secondary structures to look at. One is going to be the nasal structures with the atlas. So having the lateral masses and, and nasal structures uh, to where that atlas is symmetrical and that's you know one side or the other. Two, and this one is actually more, I would say, more of a powerful secondary finding than the nasal structures is the mastoid processes, so on either side, seeing how they intersect with that jawline, that uh, mandible up there. If you notice that one of those mastoid processes is kind of hanging out there and the other one is tucked underneath the jaw, you want to get those as close to symmetrical as possible. So let's talk about the posterior arch. This is a big one with orthogonal work. You want to get that posterior arch, the appearance of it on your film, to be level, right? If you are starting to get into a situation where it is too high or you're coming from too low of an angle, then that is not an acceptable posterior arch. This should be addressed by taking the picture on the S-line, but it's something to also look at if for some reason you're getting 
that smiling or frowning face on your frontal. In advanced orthogonal work, when you have a relationship of bucky tilt and camera angle that starts to move beyond 20 degrees, we will take an alternative view of an S2 facial feature shot at 10 degrees. This is really nice for a few reasons. One is the when you see on your frontal film, as that angle starts to get up too high, you can kind of blow out the structures of the lower cervical spine, which makes pinning down a cervical spine angle really tough. Also, everything sort of stretches out and magnifies and gets very tough to read. So we will take an alternative S2 at 10 to try to get a clear look at all the structures and then use a majority rules analysis of atlas structures to define that uh, atlas plane line. So if you guys are finding that uh, for some of your more hyperkyphotic patients, uh, between the angle that's on the bucky and on your camera, you're just getting washed out uh, cervical spine structures, and it's really hard to measure anything, consider the alternative view S2 at 10. A good segue from hyperkyphotic type patients where there's a lot of forward head would be adjusting the patient right to the bucky so that you don't have to have so much angle in it. And one of the things that we'll do is potentially even take the back of the chair off and take that hyperkyphotic patient that is in that locked forward head posture and actually bring them back to where they are touching a more level bucky instead of trying to adjust everything to them. And that allows you to have not so much tilt on that bucky and therefore have a cleaner uh, frontal film in terms of analysis. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found that helpful and it can help clean up some of your frontal picture, uh, nasium picture issues. If you have any specific technical questions, I would love to talk to you or hear from you. Just write a comment or send me a DM. Uh, please stay tuned for these in the future. They're going to be coming out on Fridays. This is the second installment, but I basically want to go through my entire procedure with advanced orthogonal from setting up x-rays up to analyzing them to even how I influence based on my x-ray analysis when it comes to actually adjusting on the table. Thank you guys for watching. God bless.